Hey guys, welcome to Tomo's Tech. Today we're testing capture cards. I've got three of them for you. One for 20 quid, one for 50 quid, one for 120 quid. Let's test them out and see what they're all about. So first things first, what is a capture card? Well, in very simple terms, it's a device which allows your computer to understand an input. So that input could be a DSLR camera, a mirrorless camera, a console, anything with a video output. More often than not, it's HDMI. Um, in this instance, we'll be testing USB capture cards, but they can be PCIe, for example, but they're usually a bit more expensive. You plug in your source via the HDMI, and then you plug it into your computer by USB. And once it's plugged in by USB, the computer will be able to understand it and convert that stream. So, for example, you can then use OBS to stream, or you can, like in this example, you can use it to record YouTube videos. So just a quick note on cameras, make sure it has a clean HDMI output. Some cameras don't have this. There's a full comprehensive list on the Elgato website which will advise you check before you buy any of these capture cards. If it doesn't have a clean HDMI, what that means is that you'll see the information from the camera overlaid on the screen. So for example, the ISO settings or the white balance settings, they'll appear on the side of the screen. Um, I'm using a Fujifilm X-E3 which has a clean HDMI which is why, I'm, why I can produce this clean image. So quick tip when looking for capture cards, look at the output setting. That's the important thing. So if you want to capture in 4K at 30 frames or 60 frames per second, make sure that capture card can do that. A lot of the cheaper end capture cards won't be able to achieve this output resolution. They'll say 4K on them, but that's 4K input, that's not 4K output. You want to be looking at connections as well. Most of them will just be HDMI, uh, which will allow for video and for audio in some instances if your camera supports it. But you might also want to be able to plug in your headphones or a microphone, and you might also want a loop out as well. What a loop out will give you is a clean image directly from, as if you were just plugging in a cable and didn't have the capture card there, so you could then plug it into a TV or a monitor, for example. So to test these capture cards, the setup is a Fujifilm X-E3 camera, it has a compatible HDMI cable which is able to output the correct signal. We have a USB microphone which is recording the audio. It's all done through OBS and the camera itself is plugged directly into the rear of the motherboard I.O. slots to ensure that it has a good signal. So the three capture cards that I've chosen seem to be quite abundant on Amazon, i.e. they're being sold by multiple people. The first one was £20, which is the Tanda capture card. And the reason I'm not testing the cheapest of the cheapest capture cards, well, you can see here if you click on this video, I did a previous test of Tanda versus a really, really cheap capture card. The next one is a £50 capture card, which offers a 4K import, 1080p, 60 frames per second output. It is, has multiple inputs and outputs, which gives it a bit more of a unique selling point. Again, it's sold all over the place on Amazon, so I thought that'd be a good comparison. And then the third one is the Elgato, which seems to be the market leader. And that offers 4K 30 frames per second output, which is, I'm really keen to see what the uh, what the results are like on that. Another quick note, just make sure you've got the correct cable for your camera or console. For the Fuji, for example, it is a micro HDMI to HDMI on the capture card. So all of these capture cards have been set to record at 1080p by 60 frames per second. Let's jump into the test. For the test of the Tanda USB 3.0 1080p capture card, Peter Piper picked a peck of peck of pebbles. Clap test. This is a test of the USB 3.0 4K capture card device. Peter Piper picked a pick of peck of peppers. Clap test. This is a test of the Elgato Camlink 4K capture card. Peter Piper picked a pick of pickled peppers. Clap test. So just so we're clear, me waving my hands around was just to check the tearing in the image to make sure that there was no missed frames or anything. And you'll see I've put stills from all three of the capture cards next to each other. The Tanda probably has the worst colouring of the three. The 4K and the Elgato are not too bad comparatively. I think the Elgato just does win in terms of image quality, however. So what's the verdict then? Which one should you buy? Well, that's very much going to come down to what you want to use it for. If you want to beef up your Zoom meetings and then make use of an existing DSLR, then the £20 option will be fine. 
if you want to use your games console for streaming and have a few more options, then spend a bit more, spend 50 quid and go for the 4K option. If you want the best of the best, and what I consider to be the best image quality, then the Elgato will probably be for you. It also offers 4K at 30 frames per second, which gives you a bit of future proofing, so in the future if you upgrade your camera, the Elgato will still be of good use to you. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have and you've found it useful, please hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you again soon.